Hi everyone, I'm Trish and welcome to my women's online Bible study. Today we're covering Ruth chapters 1 and 2. So let's say a short prayer and dive right in. Heavenly Father, uh, please give me clarity to speak and the hearer the ear to hear. Please impart on us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of all your ways that we may walk upright before you and help us to share your word with others in clarity and in its truth. And please uh, help us to remember to put on the full armor of God, those things mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So grab your Bibles and turn with me to Ruth. Uh, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion, Ephraimites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they <clears throat> went to the country of Moab and remained there. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. Now they took wives uh, of the women of Moab. The name of one was Orpah, and the other, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. Then both Mala and Shilion also died. So the women survived her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. Therefore, she went out from the place where uh, she was and her two daughter-in-laws with her. And they, went on to the, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dwelt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest each in the house of her husband. So she kissed them. And they lifted up their voices and wept, and they said to her, Surely we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there still sons in my womb, that they may be your husband? Turn back, my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight, and uh, should also bear sons, would you wait for them till they were grown? Would you restrain yourselves from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. And they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. <laughs> uh, return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you forever, for wherever you go. I will go, and wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. When you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also. If anything but death parts you and me. Uh, when she saw that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem, and it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. And the woman said, Is this Naomi? But she said to them, Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi, since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, uh, who returned from the country of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. Uh, Ruth too. There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. So Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him, in whose sight I might find favor. And she said to her, go, my daughter. Then she uh, left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servants who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? So the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered and said, It is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. 
And she said, please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued from morning until now, though she rested a little in the house. And Boaz said to Ruth, you listen, you will listen, my daughter. Will you not? Do not go to glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close by my young women. Let your eyes be on the field with, uh, which they reap and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. So she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? But, and Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, and how you have left your father and your mother in, in the land of your birth, and have come to a people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work, and the full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel, whose, uh, under whose wings you have come for refuge. Then she said, Let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and have spoken kindly to your maidservant. Though I am not like one of your maidservants. Now Boaz said to her at mealtime, Come here and eat of the bread and dip your piece of bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the, reap beside the reapers and he passed parched grain to her. And she ate and was satisfied and kept some back. And when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves and do not reproach her. Uh, also let grain from the bundles fall purposely for her leave it that she may glean and do not rebuke rebuke her so she gleaned in the field until evening and beat out what she had gleaned and it was about an ephah of barley and she took it and went into the city and her mother-in-law saw that she had gleaned what she had gleaned so she brought out and gave to her uh, what she had kept back after she had been satisfied and her mother-in-law said to her where have you gleaned today and where did you work? Blessed be the one who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked and said, the man's name with whom I worked today is Boaz. Then Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, blessed be he for the, of the Lord who has not uh, forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. And Naomi said to her, this man is a relation of ours and one of our close relatives. Ruth the Moabite said, he also said to me, you shall stay close by uh, my young men until they have finished all my harvest. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it is good, my daughter, that you go out with his young women and that people do not meet uh, you in any other field. So she stayed close by the young women of Boaz to glean until the end of barley harvest and wheat harvest. And she dwelt uh, with her mother-in-law. Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your word and let it fill us up till we're able to eat of it again. Uh, if you're just here for scripture to read through, thanks for coming to read through scripture with me. I really appreciate it and I hope it's a means of blessing to you and I hope to see you again next time. And if you're here for more in-depth Bible study, stick around and we'll dive right in. Okay, so we are um, finally here at the book of Ruth. Uh, the children of Israel are having uh, judges to reign over them and so far uh, they aren't doing so good because uh, they currently don't have a king or as someone uh, who walks upright with the Lord to lead them. Um, and then we come to uh, Ruth's short book. It's only uh, four chapters. Uh, but um, they have been doing what is right in their own eyes. Um, and then uh, uh, I wanted to read this brief excerpt from uh, my Bible um, introductory title and author. It is from the Reformation Study Bible, uh, where uh, Dr. R.C. Sproul is the general editor. Uh, and it just says that the writer of the Book of Ruth is anonymous. This, however, has not stopped speculation in regard to authorship. A widely held position is that Solomon wrote the book after the death of his father, David, the Babylonian Talmud, considers the prophet Samuel to be the author. author. Samuel wrote his book, Judges and Ruth. Some commentators argue that this makes sense because they believe that Judges and Ruth were originally one book. Others argue that Ruth was composed during the 5th century BC. The title of the book does not help to identify the author. It simply refers to one of the main characters of the story and not it to its writer. So I just wanted to give that information about who uh, possibly could be the author of the Book of Ruth, um, whether it was written later on or whether Samuel uh, was indeed that author is uh, speculated. Um, so we don't know, but but we do have it uh, as uh, uh, 
in, included in the scriptures, uh, it's holy book of the Lord, and uh, it is one of uh, the 66 books that we have today um, to uh, give us information on um, the history of the children of Israel, and um, it takes this break to uh, give uh, Naomi and Ruth, uh, the Moabites and Boaz, um, th their story. <laughs> and so just let's just dive right in so that I uh, won't be uh, caught, my tongue caught, uh, caught up in the uh, trying to explain any more than I have to. Um, so it picks up with, uh, it comes to pass, chapter uh, one, that it comes to pass in the days of the judges. So we know that the ruler uh, of the judges, uh, sorry, that the judges are still ruling over Israel at this time. Uh, there was a famine, so a famine um, in uh uh, ancient times in Israel was a sign that the Lord was upset with the people. Um, so um, they uh, pick up and move over to the country of Mo, uh, Moab, uh, Elimelech and his family. And uh, the pro through the process of time, Elimelech dies, um, his two sons die, and Naomi is left and her two daughter-in-laws. Then uh, Ruth wants to go, so she hears that there's that the Lord has um, uh, blessed the land, uh, and she wants to return home uh, because there's bread there. So she picks up uh, from the land of Moab, and she uh, leaves, um, and I'm, I'm probably going into uh, chapter two as well with my um, explanation of the story uh, or, or, or recap of the story. Um, so she picks up and uh, one of her daughter-in-laws uh, wants to return. She, well, she she tells them to return because she's at this age to where she can't reproduce. And even if she could, she would have to find a husband, have that child, and they would have to wait until that child is grown to marry one of them. So she's saying that it's pointless to come with me. Um, you guys are still uh, assume, presumably youthful and you can, uh, still conceive and have husbands so you should go and do that but Ruth is not having it she's like no I'm going with you and um, I put off the gods of my land and I want to serve your God and that is going to be a huge blessing to her um, as we can see uh, she has uh, and I just love 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 the uh, information that we have here of Ruth and Naomi to help us women where um, uh, like an older woman can uh, guide us um, and give us information on how to obtain a husband and how to walk upright and that's exactly what she goes on uh, we won't see uh, all of the information that she gives Ruth until we pick up next time uh, but uh, Ruth has started working. She goes here. She gets a job. Uh, we see that this 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 woman is working, uh, and she's working al alongside other uh, women. She is a gleaner of wheat, um, and uh, Boaz sees her. I guess he sees these people in his field um, working all the time, and there's this new woman here, and he has taken an interest in her, and he has um, pulled her to the side and said something to her, and this new uh those feelings when you get when you like someone i don't know how many single women watch it but i am single and um those feelings when you see somebody that you actually like because it i don't like people often so um i don't think that i'm picky i just you know i don't like every guy who blows in the wind i i, I can see attractive men and i still won't you know, it has to be something. I don't know what it is, but anyhow, um, those feelings that you get. So she goes back um, and tells her uh, mother-in-law, like, "Hey, this guy Boaz, he saw me in the field, and you know, just those you know womanly talks when you like someone. Um, I I know me and my sisters do it. Uh, if she likes someone, uh, uh, or, or I have multiple sisters, so if they like someone, they'll call and say, "Hey, I met this guy," and you know, da 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 da, and I'll do the same. And oh my goodness, he's so cute or whatever. <laughs> we don't hear uh, Ruth say, oh my goodness, he's so cute. But we do know that she likes him because she is telling her mother-in-law and then um, uh, on, on what to do. She's like, he's telling me to stay close by the other women. And she's like, hey, this guy's a close relative of ours. You know, do what he says, stay by close to the other women. Um, and uh, 
uh, that extra uh, barley he's leaving behind is showing that he, he likes her, you know, they like each other. And that is just so cute <laughs> um, in the midst of this uh, famine and all of this heartache that has come upon Naomi when she returns home. She doesn't want the other women to call her Naomi. She wants them to call her uh, Mora. Um, uh, the title of those names, uh, 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 I'm gonna look it up. I didn't write it down. Sorry. Okay, I found it. So um, Naomi means sweet, and she doesn't want to call be called sweet anymore because of all of the calamity that has come upon her. Uh, she wants to be called uh, Mora, which means bitter, uh, because of, of again of what happened to her um, uh, with losing her husband and her two sons. She's saying that she went out full and she's come back empty. Uh, but um, uh, there is hope, you know, she is, her, her daughter-in-law has stayed with her. She has this companion, this friend, and this other woman. And um, uh, Boaz uh, likes uh, uh, Ruth uh, and they like each other. And um, we will see where this story leads um, uh, in the midst of uh, this heartache that she has uh, endured. So thank you for coming to read through and study scripture with me. I really appreciate it. I hope it's a means of blessing to you as it is to me. Uh, and I hope to see you again next time. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and bring you peace both now and forever. Till next time, bye.